the seat height here is going to be 18 inches. Um, if we look closely, especially in the front view, let me get in closer with the Z key. If you look closely, you'll see that your move gizmo is located at the bottom of the object. So that's where its pivot point is. So that means that that's the center of transforms. So right now, the pivot point is at the origin of the world, or near the origin of the world. It's zero value in world Z. Okay, so I want to move it up such that the, the top of the seat is at about 18 inches. I know that the thickness here is 2 inches, so then I want to move this up to be uh, 16 inches. Okay, so I'm going to go down to the Z transform type in, and I've got the move tool active. I'm going to type in 16. Okay, so now the bottom, where the pivot point is, is at 16 inches, and the top, which is 2 inches higher, is at 18 inches. Right. Okay, before we go any further, we want to measure our object and make sure it's really the right size. Uh, I could go into my top view and count out all these grid lines and try to figure out what the size is, but it's much easier just to use a tape helper. So 3ds Max provides a measurement tool, and I can access that through the Create panel. And one of the categories of objects here is helpers, and it's indicated by a tape measure icon. So I'll click on that, and now we see tape as one of the objects. So I'll activate that tool, and then just click and drag anywhere in the viewport and release the mouse. And now I've created the tape helper. I can right-click to exit creation mode, and I can go to the modify panel. And you can see the length being read out here. As I move the tape head around, the length is going to change, and we will get a readout here. Now if I select the, the tape target and move it around, you'll see that unfortunately I'm not able to see the value here. So you know, if I wanted to measure the distance from here down to here, I'd need to have the tape head selected in order to see the actual value. So 20 inches is actually a little bit much, and I probably want to make that a little bit less. One little trick that you can do so that you can see the readout when you're moving the tape target around is with the tape head selected, you can go to the Modify panel and click this button that says Pin Stack. And what that does is it keeps this particular Modify panel page open no matter what you select. So if I select the tape head or, or literally anything else, uh, this will show me the parameters for the tape object. So normally when you choose different objects, the modify panel is going to change in order to reflect your selection. But here now, I'm able to move these around and still see the readout. I can turn pin stack back off again. And now I'm going to just do a quick adjustment to the base here. So I can select the base object and I can adjust the shape even though I already have an extrude modifier applied. In fact, I can just go into the modifier stack and select any one of these sub-object modes, such as vertex or segment, and enable show end result in the modify panel so that I can see the extruded shape at the same time that I can select and move these different parts of the model. Now, it gets a little bit hard to see sometimes what exactly you're doing, so you might need to turn this on and off a couple of times. But you can see with it off, I can make the selection, and then I can turn it on, and then move that selection around in order to adjust the shape of the curve, which in turn adjusts the shape of the extrusion. When I'm finished, I can exit out of sub-object mode, and now's probably a good time to save. So I'll go to the application menu and choose Save As. And I want to save this as Chair01 and press Return. Let's take a closer look at the measurements of the object because this curve is going to be the basis for other curves and we want to make sure that we get this right. So I'll go back to the reference image and remind you of what we're trying to achieve. 
I've also got the specifications from the manufacturer. So let me pull those up for you. And it says in black and white that the seat width and depth are both 17 inches. Good. Okay, so in Max, I can select the tape and I can actually specify a length. And it defaults to 100 inches. I could set it to whatever I like. Set it to 17 and press Enter. And now, when I move the tape target around, you'll see that it's measuring out exactly 17 inches in any direction. Okay, so if we want to line this up and make sure that this is right, all we need to do is give the tape and its target an X value of zero. So I can double click to make sure I've selected both the tape and its target. And I'll go down here to my transform type in area with my move tool active and type in a zero. And they're, now they're both moved to an X value of zero. Okay, now to fully measure this, I can get a little bit closer because the tape measurement actually starts from this side of the triangle, not the point. So I'll place that where it needs to be. And zooming in up here, that shows me that I've just got to move the segments of my curve down a little bit here. So I'll select it once again. I can turn off pin stack and I can go to the editable spline segment mode and turn off show end result this time. So I can make sure I select what I think I'm selecting. Zoom out. There we go. And I can just move that down to adjust it. Then I'll exit out of sub object mode. Go back to my tape measure. Measure it in the other direction. Move this up here, move the target as well. Okay, so we can see here now that according to this, my chair isn't quite wide enough because I'm still specifying a length of 17 inches. Okay, we can play that same trick again with uh, leveling this out. Double click and type in a zero in Y this time. And I just want to basically center it this isn't rocket science, so I don't need to be super exactly precise, but that's good enough. Then I can go back into spline sub-object mode in this case, and just scale it out ever so slightly. If I wish I can get in closer and I'll get finer control. Okay, now I've got a chair that's exactly 17 inches wide and 17 inches deep. Can exit out of sub-object mode, and now we're ready to create a sweep for the leg braces.